All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, thanks for tuning in for another quick little channel CG video. Today, I am back with this 2004 Dodge Durango. Today, we're going to be doing a full coolant flush and also going to be replacing the thermostat on it. Lately, I've been noticing a little bit of an overheating issue where, I mean, it is perfectly fine on the highway, but when you're sitting for any length of time, the temperature begins to climb and it doesn't slow down. It seems like a fan-related issue, but just going to do a full flush and replace the thermostat while we're at it. Put quite a few miles on it since anything like that was done, so might as well get it done today since it's a little warmer out. It's about, well, at the moment it's about 38, 39 degrees, but after working in 18 degrees, 20 degrees the last couple days, this feels pretty good. So anyways, we're going to work on that today and I'm going to take you guys along as always. I know a lot of you guys that follow along with the channel are kind of fans of the Durango videos, so Here's a little treat for you. We're going to be doing some work on it today, so without further ado, let's get started. That's my fault. All right, over here at the shop, by the way guys, I'm sorry if there's any wind noise because as soon as I started filming today, it started to get a little breezy and I know this camera doesn't like wind. So, anyways, first thing I guess we're going to do is drain the coolant that's in there. That's the drain right there. We're going to loosen that and then the coolant is going to flow out of there. So, we're going to do that. Alright guys, kind of last minute decided to push the S10 outside and bring this thing in here to get it done because it is so windy, it kind of on and off. It'll be better in here. So now we got to drain this. I know this pan isn't going to be big enough, but it'll get us started anyways. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be real close. <laughs> I think I should have found a bigger bucket. This could be a problem. <laughs> All right guys, so I just finished getting the coolant completely drained out of here. Now the next step is to remove this hose and also I guess this plate. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. There's the one bolt. I believe it's two bolts and then that housing is going to come off and then we can pull the thermostat out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the old thermostat out, bolt it back together temporarily, then I'm going to fill the system with water. We'll run it for a little while, let it flush, dump it out, see how it looks and then get the system completely flushed out with the thermostat out of it and then we will proceed to put the new thermostat in and fill it with coolant. Fairly simple, at least it seems, so hopefully there's not too many complications. <laughs> All right guys, so I just got the housing unbolted. You can see it right here. I'm sorry the lighting's so terrible, by the way. I'm holding a flashlight here, but you can see down in there is the thermostat right here. So I'm gonna pull that out real quick. The bolts weren't too bad. I mean, they were they were a pain to reach. I've seen worse, but this one up top, uh, this is a 13 mil deep dish with this extension. I don't know how long that extension is, but it worked perfectly. And then for the bolt underneath, which was the hard one to reach, I just threw this deep dish on here without the extension and it was able to fit down in there just just barely and I was able to get it loose and then I could get the rest of the way with my fingers. It wasn't bad also make sure you got something under the car because there will be some some coolant that leaks out. Got a little some spillage going on here. Anyways we're looking good so I just gotta pull that thermostat out and bolt it back up and then we can move on. Well, finally broke down and turned on the heater. My hands were getting so so cold out here. Anyways, I just finally got the old thermostat out. That thing was stuck in there. What I was finally able to do is get this screwdriver down in here, like kind of like so, and rest it against, uh, I don't know what this is, power steering or something, but I was able to kind of go down in there like this and pry it out and spray some PB Blaster on it and things like that. So finally got it out. I don't know if that's a, it's a common thing with the Durangos is the thermostats like to... It's stuck in there, but this one definitely was. I'm glad it's out, and I can tell it's old, so. All right, well, just finally got the thermostat housing all bolted back up. That is a pain to get that one bottom bolt, but, you know, just one of those things. All 
All right, well, that didn't work quite as I had hoped. I forgot that the thermostat has the rubber gasket on it that seals everything together in there. So when I got the water filled up to about the level of the upper radiator hose, it started leaking out all over the place. So I guess I'm going to install the thermostat now <laughs> and then uh, continue on with the flush. And here's the new thermostat. All right guys, put water in it, and now we're gonna take it up and down the road real quick. Just to, you know, make sure the system's all nice and circulated, and then we will bring it back in. I'm probably just gonna flush it this one time, drain the water back out, and then fill it with coolant. I think we can call it a day. All right guys, just drain the water back out. Now I'm gonna close the valve and fill it with coolant. Something I am going to check really quick though first is all the bolts on the thermostat because I noticed it was leaking uh, water out there and I had actually I had forgotten to tighten the worm drive clamp on this which could have been could have been why but I'm gonna check check them all. It's hard I don't have a torque wrench that'll fit down in there so can't really torque them correctly but tighten them down a little better and make sure everything's cool there. We'll add the coolant and then we should be all set. Well, I just made a mess. Luckily, I have a gallon of water left, so I can kind of kind of rinse it off here. That's one of the nice things about having an old, well, not really a piece of junk, but an old car like this is, you don't have to worry about everything being absolutely perfect. Of course, you want it to be clean and stuff like that, but, you know, if you spill, spill stuff, if you're an amateur like me and you don't know what you're doing as well, it'll be fine. If this was like a $30,000, $40,000 car right now, I wouldn't even want to breathe on it. So the coolant flush is all done now. I burped the system off camera. I burped the baby. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's where you squeeze the uh, upper radiator hose to help get the air out of the system. I did that off camera and I did have to burp a little more than I thought. I ended up having to add pretty much all of the, I think it was eight quarts I had mixed of, I think it was about two gallons of coolant basically. Uh, and it filled the radiator to the top with no bubbles now and the car is running perfectly. This also took care of that uh, overheating issue that I originally was concerned about when I did this because I, I warmed the car up also off camera and, and let it idle for a while and it sat at its temperature perfectly fine. So I guess this took care of it. I'm wondering if the thermostat was not opening up quite all the way, the old one, and maybe it was just enough to get it to overheat at idle and also the having the old coolant in it that it did. But hey, either way, it seemed to take care of the issue and the car is running perfectly fine now. Honestly, this, this Durango's been in our family for like 10 years we've had it. I mean, I grew up in this car. Part, part of me really wants to get one of my own. If I picked up another one, I could have some fun with it and we can make videos of it. Let me know what you guys think of that down in the comments. Maybe someday I'll, I'll pick up one of these. Now seems to be the time to buy one. The price is right, you know. I mean, this one has 169,547 miles on it right now. And it, I mean, I'm driving it. 
and honestly, this is, of course, the oldest car we own and by far the highest mileage car we own, but it's still the most reliable car that we own. I would say this is still way more reliable than my PT Cruiser at this point. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick little channel CG video. Be sure to go give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy. Be sure to comment down below also with any questions about this or just anything you want to say. We'll have a good time down in the comments as always. And of course, be sure to go subscribe to see stuff whenever it comes out. More S10 stuff this Sunday, I promise. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching. You rock. God bless, and I will see you in the next one.